podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Triangulation is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Triangulation with Tom Merritt and Leo Laporte. Episode 3, recorded January 12th, 2011. Jerry Ellsworth. Our next guest, Mr. Tom Merritt, invented this. <laughs> that's really a not tangle most, of cables. It's Ooh, not no, the most a joystick. But that's but not. Maybe you would recognize it uh -huh. from this. Not just a joystick. It, just plug it in your TV to play. I'll pull back a little bit. This is a joystick that contains within it. 30 Commodore 64 games. But let me tell you the thing that's the most interesting to me about this. If you know the secret code, you can unlock it. And it actually is a Commodore 64. Well, how could it be anything else? The whole ROMs, Woo! all the ROMs, everything, even basic are in there. Yeah, and you can hook a keyboard and a disk drive up to it and download your own games into the Flash. And can you hook up a 1541 to it? Absolutely. We did our development with a 1541. Remember the old bang, 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 bang sound oh, yeah. that it makes when it goes uh, it crazy? Hit the drive. I still have mine, and I have a bunch of discs I've been meaning to get around to preserving. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Jerry Ellsworth, uh, chip designer, self-taught, which is unheard of, chip designer, yeah. uh, magician, a podcaster herself. Ma she, magician? Where'd you get that? Aren't you? Uh, well, you're magical. <laughs> That's what I mean by that. No, Jerry is squeezes like, thirty Commodore games into one joystick. I, have, I, I last time I saw her, I said, "I have such a crush on you. You're like Aww. you're like the coolest person in the world." So it's just because I brought my laser by the cottage and started burninating things. So awesome, and because you use words like burninate, and because <laughs> I believe she might actually be anamorphic. Yeah, look at that in real life. That's amazing. How does she do it? So Jerry um, is also a race car driver. She's mm -hmm. a roller derby person. She collects pinball machines and restores them. I'm up to like 90-ish pinball machines now. It's, it's out of control. Well, I was just about to tell you that we are leasing a new space. You know our cottage and how small it is. Down the road with a studio space of about 9,400 square feet. Down, oh, smokes. But, that, but downstairs... There's a completely unused basement of 6,000 feet, and I would like to offer it to you as your lab. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm a try Jerry lives up in Oregon. I've been trying to get her to move down here. Uh -huh. so, oh, man, we would, tempting. You broadcast overnight, and that would be so cool if I just put Jerry on all night, every night. On it's Twitter. Jerry well, up all night. Up all night with Jerry. <laughs> kind of like Gilbert Godfrey up all night. <laughs> you just work on that screechy voice. Yeah, no. <laughs> We're not burning things. Now, when you tend your solder. <laughs> <laughs> she also does, uh, do you still do Fat Man and Circuit Girl? No, we kind of let that uh, fade off into the sunset. We did a year and a half of it. It was intense. Live shows every week showing three inventions each. Yeah, that's was, way too much. Yeah, very aggressive. So now I'm just doing about two to three videos a week of inventions and so it's, it's about the same amount of work. So. Your stuff's on YouTube? Yes. Jerry Ellsworth at YouTube. That's probably the best place to see all my work. I, um, just, I just had the, a video. The other day I had the best job, best time. I just, you know, wandered over to your site. Oh, wait a minute. Did I do? Oh, I went to usurveys.com instead of youtube.com. Wait a minute. <laughs> Is that YouTube that's asking me these questions? It does look like it. Yes. That Orn. can't be right. I've never seen this before. You just got surveyed. I think this is spam. Okay. Click on it. Click Let's on it. Let's just see. How often do you watch videos? Every freaking day. No, instead of a pop-up asking if you'd like to take a survey, they just hijacked you. Do you want the ask toolbar? I'm not. Oh, boy, I get a prize. A thousand. This is. I must have mistyped something. <laughs> yeah, but it's got the YouTube logo. I think I typed YouTube.com. I mean, it's got a YouTube like <laughs> I did. Logo. I typed YouTube.com. Uh, Never yeah. go to YouTube.com. Uh, just give us your credit card, and we'll just, send you this yeah. thousand Oh, wait. Stay on this page. Yeah, yeah. That's totally no, I'm going to YouTube.com. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I, uh, I, you are so cool. Oh, oh this, I, I've been, I now have a sponsor for my videos, and it's so awesome. They've been paying me to do a science series on electronics. So it's Adafruit Industries. They make science and electronic kits. Oh, Adafruit, nice. 
Yeah, they do some really cool stuff. So it's easy to get behind them and, and they did the uh, the Connect Hack Challenge. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I kind of hang out with all the bad girls of electronics and whatnot. And <laughs> that should be uh, a show, the bad girls yeah. of electronics. Oh yeah, Lady Ada's a little edgy there with cell phone jammers <laughs> and stuff. I adore her. But anyway, they. They commissioned this where um, <laughs> I'm using cardboard cutouts to simulate all the history of electronics. When I meet people like Jerry Ellsworth, it makes me almost despair because, uh, well, it, 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 both, it gives me great hope for the world, but it makes me despair because there are people out there who are so talented, so creative, and such individuals uh, that I just feel like I'm trapped in, you know... A, a, a conventionality. Do you ever feel like that, Tom? Or is that you mean when uh, I looked at her battery video just now and I compared it to the one that I did at CNET where I had batteries laying out on a table? Yes. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. I got that too. I encompass everything. I hooked, uh, was it like 40 nine volt batteries in a in a row and melted? Uh, yeah. Big yeah. Metal See, I had this. batteries laid out on a table, telling people there were no explosions. These are the different kinds of batteries. <laughs> Now, is this where you put... I was watching you build a car the other day. Is it also yeah, the same channel? Same channel. There's there's a couple hundred videos on there now, I think. Uh, so over the, 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 the fall, I was helping a friend build a race car. So that was really fun. I got to go back to my old fabrication days when I was, you know, cutting metal and bending stuff. So This, this is how you started, because your dad uh, was like a uh, stock car guy, right? Yeah, he did that as a hobby. That's not really where I started. I kind of started in hobby electronics and then got ostracized in school and everyone. That's what I want to talk about, because I want to know how you become such a unique individual in this world of cookie cutter people. <laughs> how do you become Jerry Ellsworth and where did it start? Well, it starts with a lot of pain and grief from um, my peers just abusing me and becoming a little bit reclusive. Um, yeah, I was a little weird. I liked science and I liked electronics and you know, there was one time in probably junior high or somewhere around there where the science or math teacher said, I want you to build some kind of futuristic spacecraft. You, you know, you could draw it on craft paper or something and bring it in. So I built this spacecraft out of all this plastic and I had blinking LEDs all over it and relay logic so that, you know, it could have different light patterns going. And I brought it in and I don't know. And so, yeah. I, yeah. thought I thought the end of the story was going to be, and you got an F because they said, we said draw it on paper. <laughs> Probably, I, I right? I've situations like that, too. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're too creative. You're too... So kids kind of said, uh, what, I mean, did they call you names? Oh, yeah, yeah. And it was the physical stuff that I hated the worst. They would uh, kick you, beat you, pull your hair? Yeah, you know, trip you. Um, oh, when Jerry. In junior high, there was like this... I wish I knew his name. I'd go hunt him down. Yeah, let's um, go get him. We could send the Twit <laughs> Army after him. <laughs> um, he was, like, taller than I was, so he'd spit in my hair. You know, how how uh, degrading is that? Um, but um, it shouldn't be too hard to figure out who he is. No, I think we could probably do it. <laughs> the best part of this uh, building, I'm, I want to show a little bit of this building, the car video. The best part is when you do the time lapse. Is that in the oh. first video here? No, you should go to the next ones. They they get more interesting. This is just this is like you setting it up, saying what you're going to do. Yeah, so that's an old Camaro that uh, my friend Trish gutted gutted it out, but I did all the the fabrication of the roll cage and stuff in it. And uh, at one point, I was cutting through the floorboard with a plasma cutter, and I hit mm. the gas line. And mm. Mm. Did it explode? Well, a big burst of flames. It was pretty exciting. I mean, it's not I, the first that's, time I Now I remember. That's why I was watching the video, because I read your tweet. I almost blew my... I just blew myself up or something. <laughs> <laughs> I said, oh, I want to watch that. This is, <laughs> this, oh, yeah, here we go. This is so, so cool. This is the, I was watching you bend this pipe for like an hour. I know. Isn't that cool? I, I, I love... Uh, well, if I can get the, the tube loaded into my new tubing bender. Actually, this is Trisha's tubing bender. I can't... It's so much fun. And then you actually put this... Actually, there's a lot of plumbers crack here. That's like 90% of the YouTube comments. Like, ah, oh, plumbers crack. Oh, there's no plumbers See, crack. now what I noticed was the Star Wars belt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so in high school, um, I, I was still getting picked on. But then one day I just snapped and like clobbered this kid. Yes. And uh, that like changed my entire life. I went from like this 
you know, really nice nerd to like this crazy psycho that would they were scared do anything you. crazy. Um, the more crazy stuff I could do, the more they'd leave me alone. So that's oh. ultimately how I got into race cars too, is like, what's the most wild and crazy thing I can do? So, so you got conditioned, basically, this is interesting. It was almost operant conditioning into being uh, an iconoclast. Because if you were normal, people would treat you badly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I really went off the rails. I ended up dropping out of high school, and my dad was convinced I was going to be face down, dead in a ditch in you know a very short amount of time. And he was like, are you doing drugs? What's going on? Yeah, this is what I ask my kids every day. <laughs> well, what was uh, it that, that kept you from just going out and, you know, shooting up smack or something. I mean, what would, cause, cause this, this what you're I'm watching not. right well, now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm, I'm curious, like what, what led you into this? Well, you know, uh, even though I had like found a way to defend myself and I found some peers that accepted me, like all the bad kids kind of accepted me at this point and mm. I was kind of safe with them, but internally I still felt horrible. I mean, I just felt terrible inside because um, all those years of kids telling me that I was inadequate in so many different ways just sticks with you. And and I uh, eventually, in my early 20s, I went to see a therapist on my own. I'd already seen like dozens of therapists every time I got arrested by the police as a, <laughs> a juvenile What'd you get arrested for? Oh, gosh. Uh, you name it. We were always doing terrible stuff. Uh, like prank one time, stuff? Yeah. I like always pumpkin felt smashing or window smashing? Window smashing. We'd shoot lots of holes in windows with uh, BB guns. And one so time I got arrested for smashing mailboxes. With and baseball hey, bats? Did you drive down the road and hit them with bats and that kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we smashed so many mailboxes. Must have been hundreds over a couple <laughs> summers. <laughs> you were angry. <laughs> I was. I was. I... It was a horrible time in my life, and although I was achieving a lot of really cool stuff, like building race cars and did getting you, all this attention, and did you, did you know at the time that you had a like astronomical IQ? Did others know that? I, I don't think I do have an astronomical IQ. Yes. I think I'm just persistent. You have a, no, it's just persistence. Oh, no, I mean, other on. people get concepts much easier than I do, but you don't um, give I, up. Yeah, I mean. I just keep going and going and going. Um, I'm just thinking if we could mold a, you know, like a million people into people like you, the world oh, would be boy, a better the world would be trouble. <laughs> the world would have fewer mailboxes, but it would be a better place to live. It would be a better place to live. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh God, the juvenile delinquent days. I, I mean, I feel bad about a lot of it, but it's kind of funny thinking back. Like I had this obsession with streetlights, like the the four way stops so dangerous the things that i was doing with the four-way stops like one time i got like caught by the cops um taking the panel off of one of these controls for the four-way stops because i was trying to knock the lights out another time there's a little access panel and they'd been servicing something on the the lights and they left this access panel open and i open it up and i start flipping all these switches up and down yeah. and eventually got it got it to where it was flashing red in all directions and it happened to be on the corner where my father's gas station was. Uh -oh. And, uh, well, this was in the middle of the night. And I came in to work um, after school. And he's like, you won't believe what happened. <laughs> Half the day, the red lights were blinking out here. And people were flying through my parking lot at 100 miles an hour trying to avoid lights. And I'm like, hey, hey, ah. <laughs> Don't know what happened. <laughs> Well, and that's kind of where I was going with my question is, you know, you obviously had a little of the the hacker maker mentality there. You were playing with stuff to see how it works. And a, a lot of folks who get frustrated, they get angry when they're young, they feel alienated, they just feel bored and they turn to crime or drugs or whatever because they just don't have anything else to do. Where where did you turn and say, I'm not going to do that. I'm, I'm going to make stuff. I'm going to rebel in a different way like switching the switches on on stoplights well i i think uh i think deep down i was always a really nice kid and um i was just kind of forced into the situation so it was always kind of there but there was so much anger i mean i can really relate to these kids that go and do really brash things um in schools and 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 go do do a lot of drugs and whatnot a lot of my friends out of this this circle that i was in got heavily into drugs i mean to a a point where it was, you know, bad for them. And then a lot of them are suffering from that today. And it's really sad. 
Um, so was there a person or a turning point or something that... Well, there's a couple things along the way. So um, I got tired of all the knuckleheads around the racetrack. So I gave up racing and I opened a computer store with a friend. And then did you ever get, by the way, did you ever get a GED or a graduate or are you? Absolutely not. You have no <laughs> I, high school diploma. No, and I'm proud of it. <laughs> I am going to get, give you a degree. As it turns out, you might be ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, yeah. So a couple of times I wanted to go take some college classes and the prerequisite to get in is to have a GED. Right. And both times I went and they said, well, if you sign up for the GED classes and show that you're going to make it through the GED classes, we'll let you sign up for these other classes. And so that's what I did each time. And then I would just stop taking the other classes <laughs> and, and, and go do my theater classes or whatever. You I did what you wanted to do. Yeah. And, and that's kind of when I was in high school, that's how I learned, um, I had a couple good mentors in high school. The shop teacher helped me out a quite a bit when I wanted to learn how to build these race cars from the ground up and had a math teacher that even though I failed every every math class from general math all the way up to um, college prep calculus, he let me sign up for the next class. And he's like, you know, I, I really encourage you to do the homework, but I'll, I'll let you sit here and just oh, absorb whatever you yeah. want. Yeah. And he knew I was on a different track, and uh, I thank him for that. I think that's uh, a failing of the United States educational system is how bureaucratic it is. It's all about well, paperwork it's about rather round, than education. It's about square pegs and round holes. I if, mean, you, if you don't fit the mold, you're out of luck. If And if you don't want to follow the procedure, it's like right. we're a factory to turn out degrees. We don't care if you it's learn exactly anything. Right. Exactly and, so, right. and so in Jerry's case, she wanted to go sit and learn something. They're like, well, if you follow the factory procedure, we'll allow you to the, actually the, learn the something. The truth, I, I think that that's true, and I think the truth is it's worse in other countries. I mean, at, at least in this country, some of <laughs> some of the Jerry Ellsworths survive, get through, and yeah, create. Sure. Um, I, I think if you look at the French system or the Japanese system or the Chinese system, oh, it Japanese really is sure, about automatons. Yeah. It is yeah. not about creativity. It's one of the reasons we still in this country kind of have a lead in at least in invention and innovation. But I think it could, you're right, it could be so much better. And it's a lot of, uh, I mean, I think the schools are headed in this direction of uh, as European school systems are. Yeah. Teach to the um, test. When I, was, when I was, yeah, when I was in school, the guidance counselors uh, would make fun of kids that went to the shop classes. I mean, I sat in the guidance counselor's room multiple times and he said things like, well, if you're not going to buckle down and do your book learning, you might as well just go out to the shop and be a welder. Ugh. Like it was a bad thing to be a right. welder Ugh. or know how to do um, these kinds of things. And now I, I went back and visited one of my teachers at my old high school and they don't even have a wood shop or a metal shop anymore. So all these these skills that I learned in in these shop classes that I use every day, just mm. even if I'm not making something physical, it's just the problem solving skills of mm. of like you know how do I cut this piece of metal? Right. Well, you know, and this is I, so much fun to watch. I have no idea what you're doing. I mean, I kind of get it, but it doesn't matter, and I'll never do it. it doesn't matter <laughs> because you're making something, and you know we don't see people make things anymore. I think that's uh, there's a quite a following for my videos, and I and I really think it's it, it is because I'm making things. Mm -hmm. um, my production values are really poor, and I have plumbers' ass crack hanging out all the time. <laughs> I actually think the production <laughs> values in this are spectacular. It's high def. It's you you you. It's detailed. I think it's just great. But that's why maybe you you belong at Twit. <laughs> she has the same aesthetic as we well, do. Well, because the aesthetic is focused on the give content. Me a sponsor, I'll uh, I'll do anything. We'll get you a sponsor. We got plenty of we got sponsors to burn. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah, baby. You're, <laughs> what comes out in your videos is you're focusing on the content, not on the form. Right. So when you say you don't have production value, you don't have fancy edits and splashes and wipes and all of this stuff. I'm so sick but of that. I can I tell see, exactly yes, what you're doing. Look, look at the close up. I want to see that. Yeah, and I've learned a lot over the, I mean, I've been trying to build my kind of, um, whatever you want to call it, my persona online for, for three or four years now. And, and there's a lot of learning. I mean, the first videos that I did were like an hour long, you know, in excruciating detail. And now I figured out, just get in there and yeah. tell them the facts as fast as you can. Like, okay, this is the roll bar. I'm going to cut it to length, and I'm going to put it in there and weld it. And oh, that bam. was a roll bar? Okay, that's what I was thinking it was. I'm 
good guess. <laughs> so, so my rule now is I'm trying to make all my videos five minutes or less. You know, even though YouTube's allowing longer videos, I'm trying to compress mine down. And the shorter I make them, the more views and the more positive feedback I'm getting. Oh, that's good to know. That's interesting. Yeah. But but I think it's getting to the point. It's it's get eliminating the the sugar, the gloss, and getting to the meat. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I need a 20 second intro no. to. Uh, Who needs an intro? Yeah, just yeah. and and for people like me, I have no idea what's. I don't need the intro. I'm just I'm just in awe. Do you think some uh -huh. of this is because you're a woman? Yeah, well, you know, um, I think so. I think there's a little bit of advantage that way, but then there's some disadvantages, too. Oh, there's too. other, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah there's... Uh, when you were racing, I bet there were a few disadvantages to being a woman. Oh, huge advantages. They did, A lot of the knuckleheads around there didn't like to be shown up, and I was doing pretty good. Um, what were you driving? I was driving, it was called a late model. It was a full tube chassis. It was all handcrafted. The body, everything um, was built by me. And it weighed 1,900 pounds and had 700 horsepowers. It was a V8 powered car. And it was on a dirt track. It was an oval. So it was wow. a quarter mile around the center. Wow. And we're just going around sliding the whole way. It's the, the biggest adrenaline thrill of my life. Like There's nothing out there that compares. And this Camaro you're building here is, is, is that kind of stock car? Not exactly. No? It'll oh. race on dirt, but this isn't of the same uh, the same caliber. Yeah. Did you ever do demo derby? I did, and actually, no. Demo derby is seems fun. seems like you would no. you would have <laughs> that demolition derby where you run the cars into each other. You yeah, did you that. Think, yeah, you would think it'd be really fun, but after having the thrill of going like ninety miles an hour on dirt, um, inches away from other cars, in in unison, sliding and crashing. Um, and there was a lot of crashing. <laughs> well, that's kind of the point. Yeah. That's but demo derby, it's okay. I mean, if that's you're supposed to crash, that's all you can do. Ah, then, <laughs> I see. She can do more, including microwaving <laughs> peeps. Uh -oh. Uh oh, oh, poor little peeps. I I have this obsession with killing peeps every Easter, and uh, this is just animatronic your, toys at Christmas. You're a rebel. I don't know. You're a rebel. And animatronic boys? <laughs> yeah. No toys. So, ooh, dead peep. Ooh. So, I nitrated some peeps. Uh, did I think you? it was last. Year. Oh, fun. That, so, I used potassium nitrate. Can we can we get you to come on Twit uh, for our sunrise Easter service <laughs> and melt a peep live? Hey, if I'm in town, definitely. <laughs> We could so, even do it by Skype so if you're not. Let's so close to the Twit Cottage, all this year, I've been down like nine times. I know, and, the, you, and I know, okay. and we were, I was supposed to come to the pinball thing, and I couldn't. And I really want to get together with you, but I want to get you here. I, and I, I, I still have to deliver the Twit Squeak that I built oh, for you. Oh, you have the, it. Did you come to the cottage? No, I haven't been able to. It's so far up there. We'll pay your, oh. we'll pay your way down here. I wish there was an airport right into... Uh, There's a Santa Rosa airport from Seattle, but you're in Portland, right? Yeah. Is it Portland too? Horizon flies from Portland to S Santa Rosa. There is a plane hey. right here. and we're we gonna, go. We're going to put you on it. In fact, we're going to call it the Jerry Ellsworth Special. The and Jerry every, Express. The Jerry Express, and every week we're bringing it down. So let's get chronological. <laughs> and uh, so you, you last week, when we last week talked, you had started a computer store. Oh, yeah. Okay. And that was really my like mental turning point. Uh, I kind of knew that I needed to get my head straight, but I was I was suffering this dilemma where I had my support network of the juvenile delinquent kids. But I was trying to build this computer store and I was kind of gothic a little bit. And I, I, I was trying to straddle both fences and put on this air of professionalism to get people to hand over two thousand dollars so i could yeah. build them a, a, com a computer so you were building them you weren't like reselling dells you were building them yeah yeah i mean i, I looked into selling apples and dells at the time but the margins were so low and their upfront right. commitments were ridiculous it's like what was anyway. the name of your store so people watching at home could say hey i was there uh, computers made easy computers made easy i like it yeah, I mean, this was 1995-ish. Windows 95 hadn't even come out yet when we were starting this up. And computers were a hard thing and a perfect name. And we got lots of business. And I, mean, I, I had this business partner and then we like had this falling out and and 
I lost all my money and oh, all this bad stuff. And I, it was partly my fault. I have to admit that I was really rough around the edges, but I didn't give up. Here's my persistence, I guess, is uh, I got pissed off and I went down the road and opened another store and uh, did everything I could do to undercut him. Yeah, I just <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know what? That's not called persistence. That's called competitiveness. Revenge. Revenge. <laughs> And I know that very well. I really do. I know that very well. I uh, I didn't even have, when I opened my store, I didn't even have money for product. So I would go dumpster dive in his dumpster and get the cardboard boxes for stuff. And I put it on the, the shelves and uh, pretend that I had product. And then I'd tell people like, well, you know, that, um, that whatever sound card is gone. If you give me some money, I'll go get you one. <laughs> what a good one. idea. So I was robbing pay, Peter to pay Paul constantly, and it was actually a really, really bad point in my life, too, because I was completely broke, Ugh. trying to get my head straightened out. I was And were you starving. carrying a knuckle duster in your bra? <laughs> I should have. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually your, your, your explanation of how the uh, TSA scanners work. Ah, yeah. Yeah, this is great. And for, do, oh, you build, do you actually build one? I built a TSA, a primitive TSA scanner at home. Oh, man. Like a, a millimeter Step wave? Uh, actually, centimeter wave. It was so, 10 gigahertz. Okay. This is your... Uh, so cool. It was... That was my protest. <laughs> it was my protest, That's how too. she protests. Just, a, just because they changed the name to uh, centimeter wave or millimeter wave or... Doesn't make it any better. Well, there... Doesn't make any that we're giving our liberties yeah, away. Yeah, right. It doesn't, it doesn't matter whether it's radio or millimeter from, from the principal standpoint. Exactly. So I could go on an hour about that. But well, that's uh, got 242,000 views, so somebody's listening to you. Yeah, I was... I'm, I feel all warm and fuzzy about that one because I made it as like a protest, but to my nerd brethren out there. Right. And... Um, I figured it'd get like 10K views or something like that. It's really intense. I mean, I'm going into circular polarization and all the circuits and how you have to take... I'm actually using a direct, um, a direct TV satellite dish <laughs> to do all this. So how you make a receiving feed horn become a transmitter and a receiver mm -hmm. and... <laughs> now, wait a minute, Jerry, you don't, you're not a high school graduate. How did you learn... The, you, and, and by the way, when we're going to get to this, you're a chip designer. You design chips. How did you learn yeah. this stuff? Well, okay, that's, I mean, getting back to the computer stores, really, um, this mentors were a huge part in my life. It started with amateur radio mentors oh, when I was maybe late teens. A bunch of old codgers yep. trying to get me to... Uh, Love the hands. To, yeah, learn Morse code, which yep. I didn't want to do. I just wanted to amp my CB up so I could broadcast <laughs> to the neighboring city. <laughs> and, um, but in my computer store here, going back to that, I was starving to death. I had no money. Um, I was living on ramen noodles. And across the street from my store was a insurance salesman that kind of took pity on me. And he would come over and bring me lunch and sit down with me and we'd talk computers and business. And he made subtle suggestions like, um, you know, that dark eyeliner? You, you might want um, to lose that. Yeah. There's this thing called relatability. I mean, he was really <laughs> subtle and nice about it and did it at just the right rate that I could accept it. Wow. Um, but That's he's neat. talked about relatability and how to run a business. And I admired him because he was in this little town. He was... Um, he was considered successful, so I kind of wanted. He was to... very open-minded and uh, warm. I think that's really neat. Yeah, yeah, and slowly I came around. I rejected it at first. I was still having this duality. I wanted to hang out with my hoodlum friends at night and get in trouble, and uh, come into the computer store, bloodshot eyes, and do my thing during the day. But eventually, I, I figured it out, and but. During this time, I was living on ramen noodles, and I was robbing Peter to pay Paul, and there were times that I wasn't paying rent and trying to let that slip as long as I could, or I'd, I'd slip the garbage bill and get the garbage bill shut, garbage service shut off, and then I'd be dumping my garbage in other people's <laughs> garbage cans. And you know, one, It was so humiliating. One time, I had been doing that, and the police walked in the front door right in front of one of my customers. Oh. 
and you know like we catch you doing that again we're gonna cite you and it's against the law and it's like you know am i ever, ever gonna pull out of this and uh, eventually i did and uh I learned, you know, how to not swear around customers and <laughs> and to be relatable and 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 bring kind of my my warm heart back out yeah, again and trust yeah, people. Yeah. Because when I was in high school and all this other, I, I couldn't trust anyone because adults felt I, I didn't trust them. They just seemed irrational. They didn't treat me with respect. Right. Um, I, my father was was good. He treated me pretty nicely, but other kids treated me pretty badly. So I just had zero trust in the world. Were you were you raised entirely by your father? Was your was, was your mom around? My mother died when I was one, so oh. my father pretty much raised me by himself. Wow. Um, my grandmother um, moved in with us to help out, and then she got ill, and there was like all this drama around that when she was with all this dementia, and it was that right in the middle of all this other like torture at school. It was like, yeah, it was rough. So that's how you get warped, like me. <laughs> Well, I, I think folks watching this are going to have a hard time putting those two pictures together. You seem so happy right now. <laughs> <laughs> you, you obviously, you, you, was it the therapy uh, in your 20s? or It was. Uh, 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 Rhonda, my therapist, I, can't, I really remember Rhonda so fond. Um, she, you couldn't pull any shit over on her because she immediately knew my problem after just a few minutes of talking to me. She she made me stand in front of a mirror and look myself in the eyes and say, Jerry, I forgive myself for, and then it could be whatever. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I was I was carrying all this baggage around like, oh, I said something silly the other day and I feel I'm so stupid, stupid, mm -hmm. stupid. Mm -hmm. And I just beat, beat myself up and she'd make me confront that. that well, we all have that voice in our head. And I would, I would cry. I'd sit there and cry doing that. But eventually it's like, you know, you, I still suffer with it. But I mean, now I'll do something stupid, like um, have a bad day on forecast and I'll beat myself up. <laughs> you did not have a bad day on forecast. <laughs> Listen to I can't Jerry on forecast think and I think you will agree she was show. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the thing I love so, about you, Jerry, and there's so many things to love about Jerry Ellsworth, is um, you're complete, and we're seeing it right here your complete and utter openness and honesty. And I don't know, you know, obviously you were not that way in high school. It was quite the opposite. Mm -hmm. But no. it's somewhere the switch was flipped. And it just makes you even more amazing, frankly. Because you're just there. You're completely there. So I don't know if Rhonda did it or what, but something happened. <laughs> Thank you, Rhonda. Thank you. Help me, Rhonda. <laughs> Help me, Rhonda. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, you know, there's still a lot of... Um, uh, fears and, and stuff. I, so I, I, I still put up a lot of facades, you know, like, you know, a lot of fears there, but it doesn't serve any right. any benefit not to uh, to just put them out there. Well, we all have the fears. And so it's really what you do. It's if you let them stop you or you go. And obviously nothing stops Jerry Ellsworth. <laughs> I mean, you're a force of nature. I, I'm pretty proud of some of the stuff I've done because... Um, everywhere or all throughout my life, there's been naysayers and um, I used to listen to them and now I don't like building race cars. You would not believe the amount of negativity I got during that. Um, my father, he did not want me to race. I was trying to get him to build would, me the car. I want to let you race. Are you kidding? <laughs> That's dangerous. I, he, <laughs> he, I don't blame him for that. <laughs> Actually, um, we had to come to terms with some of the things that he did. I mean, he was actually kind of mean about some of the stuff to try yeah, to prevent me from sure. racing. But I was, I was sure. determined, and I, and I went out and did it myself. And and more recently, there's a few things I've done, like did, like um, I made some transistors at home, which um, in my field doing chip design, everyone everyone goes to a multi million billion dollar do chip fab. Yeah. yeah, you can't do that. There's no way you can make anything at home. Um, and I, it took me three years and a lot of persistence. And I found I could buy stuff off eBay, old equipment. And, and eventually I distilled it down to where I could do it with just a, a, an ordinary pottery kiln and some wa <laughs> uh, silicon wafers off eBay and a couple chemicals here and there. And you can make some things that function as... as uh, as transistors and Jerry was at the Maker Fair last year making um, 
Inter integrated circuits. <laughs> right on site. Uh, it was over the head of most people there because it was a little abstract to look at. I still have at. mine. I have one. <laughs> I wonder if it still works. Hmm. I, I don't, you wouldn't even know how to start. Uh, I'll have to test it next time I'm out. So, so uh, people really want to know, and I, and I, I don't want to let this go. How do you learn, uh, no high school diploma, how do you learn how to make chips? How do you learn all this electronics? What, where, so after the computer store, what happened? Okay, well, with the computer stores, I didn't know much about PCs, but I, I, one thing I always try to do is I try to surround myself with people that are where I want to be. Um, that's kind of like a lesson that I learned from uh, that insurance salesman. And uh, when I got into doing chip design, um, I started coming to Silicon Valley um, and actually burned a lot of money and ran out of money again, um, just trying to spend as much time as I could at trade shows and meeting people and having coffee with people and kind of trying to find some mentors. And I found some mentors along the way that um, gave me little nuggets of information and guided me. And, and it takes a tremendous amount of work on your own if you want to learn it on your own. But I'm kidding. Are there it, books? I mean... Yeah, I have bookshelves just full of, of books. I'm a book connoisseur when it comes to... tell me you don't have a high IQ, though. I mean, I could look at those books till the cows came home. I wouldn't design it. I'd be able to design a chip. Well, it's just your priorities, right? <laughs> I guess. Here is, by <laughs> the way, here is what uh, Jerry was building... Uh, at the Maker Fair, let me let me show you this. And I have bad news for you: a diode fell off. I don't know what to do. Oh, <laughs> oh well. Oh no, that probably means it doesn't work, doesn't it? Okay, so that has um, a discrete transistor at the bottom, the little rectangle, uh -huh. and then the rectangle at the top has it looks to me like five on there. It's hard with the One, resolution. One, two, three, four, five. Yep. Yep, so the, the little center blob, so there's a lower blob and a center blob mm -hmm. and a top blob, that's uh, source, gate, and drain, the, the essential components for a MOSFET transistor. And you can create those all at home with pretty easy to get stuff. And uh, <laughs> That's really cool. So what, did, what was the, was this just going to light up? Is that all it does to show? Is yeah, that, that's yeah. That's a you readout. Could, yeah. Okay. No worries. So, so it would still work. It still work. You just wouldn't know it's working. Oh, now, okay, when you're making them at home, they don't have the same protection that um, a, a, like a chip in your iPod would have. Right, obviously. So it's very sensitive. Probably him, uh, Leo touching it right now has probably destroyed it, but... <laughs> no! <laughs> but I will always have this, and I will keep it close to my heart, Jerry. That is just, you know, I mean, so cool. So cool. Yeah. So I'm you just taught it. yourself uh, chip design. Now, th okay, that's well, just... People, though, okay. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanna, we'll give them credit. I mean, we'll I can't even think of. I, I'm, I really, I've, I've lost friends over the years for not giving them enough credit. So I've no, tried yes, to get more, yeah. better at remembering to credit people instead of. It, it's easy when people start gobbing all of this, these compliments onto you, um, Just to be like, them. I yeah. did this, right, I did right, that. Right. Well, and, um, and when you and when you talk to people, you know, you're this this person they don't know, and you come out of nowhere, and you're like, "Hey, I want I want to learn this. I want to design chips." I'm sure a lot of them are like, "I don't know what you're talking about. That's impossible." What what is there anything about the kind of people who was who were willing to help you that was different? Obviously, they were willing to help you, but you know, is did they did they have a life philosophy of this, or did you just convince them that you were worth their time? Well. I've discovered something about mentors, and it probably goes back to my first mentor uh, when I was building the race cars. I mean, even the amateur radio operators were like this. Is Usually they're very much like, um, like me in high school, where I was not appreciated for what they do. Um, like the machinist, um, Mr. Harder, um, he would um, have me come to his shop. And I had to schlep um, pieces of metal around and clean the bed of his lathe. And in exchange, he would give me these little pearls of wisdom and, and teach me how to turn metal on the lathe and use milling machines and stuff. But really what it boiled down to is uh, it was an outlet for his, uh, his skills. I mean, I could just really sense it in him. And you, you sense this in a lot of mentors. It's like this is an outlet for them. Mm -hmm. They really want to. They like. 
So if you find someone passionate about something, they'll happily mentor you. If they're not passionate about it, there's plenty of chip designers that just do it for a day job. And yeah. um, in their spare time, they don't want to talk about um, MOSFET transistors at all. So you find so. somebody who's passionate and then you have to be passionate, obviously. And you and yeah, and it just, make that connection. Yeah. Yeah, it feeds it, and everyone gets excited. You get that adrenaline rush. I mean, when I'm sitting down across the table from a, a mentor and we're talking about whatever it might be, you know, I, I'm getting excited. My eyes are bugging out and his or her eyes are bugging out. And yeah, it's, well, it's it a win-win. It seems like a key is that you not only read all those books that you're talking about, but you also get these people to help you get your hands on it and actually do it. It makes a big exactly. difference. There's a, a funny story with the transistors. I spent, I probably did a hundred attempts at making a transistor. I have like a jar full of them. And um, I, uh, Peter, um, he used to work at National Semiconductor. He was like one of my um, only mentors. They're hard to find these days because we don't manufacture anything here mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. Had given me some some pointers, but he lived far away and... I kept trying and failing, and I, I finally wrote him and asked him, I'm like, I don't know. I, I just can't pull this off. It, every one of these transistors is shorted out. And he, he said, now tell me all the steps of what you're doing exactly. So I'm like, I do this, I do that, and then I strip the oxide off, and I make the connections. And he starts laughing. He goes, <laughs> You're such a newbie. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, everyone, <laughs> everyone knows that... Um, you don't strip the oxide off of the PN junction. And it's, oh, one yeah. of those things, it's one of those things that's one line in a book and you would never find it. Uh -huh, but it's right. like the critical thing to make a transistor work. Wow. And just that alone. And what's funny is he's, I, I think he's like probably 70. He's calling me a newbie. It was kind of pretty funny. <laughs> Here's a picture of Jerry uh, in front of her store, Computers Made Easy. In yeah, the, that uh, was in Monmouth, I think. Yeah, that was Monmouth. Is that 95, 96, thereabouts? That was later. That yeah, because I see later. the dish. We didn't have dish until later, yeah. And yeah. local networks now available. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it must be pretty late in the game. I When I was growing my business, it was so awesome. I used to watch Leo on um, our free preview channels on the satellite dish that we had built or we were selling. Um, but... I moved from location to location and bigger and bigger spots and uh, opened more stores. And so that's why I can tell that that's not the first place. Because so you went back into business then after uh, uh, you, 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 you shut it down. Or did you always have a computer store? In 95, I, I uh, got started with the computer stores and then I grew it um, until I had a, a, a five stores. Wow. Jerry, Wow. And then uh, e-machines came along and other really low-end machines. Yeah. This was in 2000. Right. And we had this big burst in 2000 because Y2K, it was just like I'm, um, it already been declining. But then also we had this burst and I had all these employees and stuff. And I was like, all right, maybe it's coming back. And then all these e-machines hit the market and our margins went from two to $300 a machine uh. down to like 50 bucks. And uh. If I had a technician on the phone talking to a customer that was having a problem, I was losing money. Right. And at this point, I had a lot of money in the bank. And I would have been smart to just bail out and invest it or something. But I kept going and uh, and burned it all up trying to maintain these stores and, and uh, get, keep these employees and stuff going. Were you learning it, it the chip design at the same time? I was still doing hobby electronics, and okay. I got into doing these uh, FPGA things, which are emulators of chips. Right. And it was, and it was only because of the computer store's money I could afford the tools to do it at the time. Um, now see. the tools are free, which is awesome. Yeah. Um, anyone can do it at home, but then you actually had to pay thousands of dollars. It was really, it was really sad because a lot of um, my employees, I was really good friends with them. We would, we were all in our twenties. This is how um, I would get employees. Um, at first, I would try to hire people that were kind of uh, like out of the, 
the local community college that went to get their certifications and they were always kind of a little arrogant. Um, but I found, find the, the guys that are like 30 years old and like kind of living in their mom's basement. I know it's a bad stereotype, but, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, um, but they lived and breathed and they're passionate about computers Right. and stick them in the back and let them be technicians. And um, anyway, we all became great friends and, and that's part of the reason I just let a lot of money go. Is, hey, make uh, a note of that, will you, Lisa? Only hire people who live in their basements with their moms. <laughs> we're, we're, we got it now. This is the secret. <laughs> well, one no, of my... It must have been tough, though, when the stores went under. That must have been very, very difficult. It was sad. It was... Like, there's been these ups and downs where um, I've always looked to please my dad. And the race cars really pleased my dad after I was very serious about it and I was doing well and he, he thought that I was going to go off and be this um, chassis builder and that was going to be my career and mm. I wouldn't end up dead in a ditch. Right. And then I gave that up and he was kind of, he I got the impression he was a little sad and then the computer stores were failing and I had to go tell my dad that um, I'm going to have to close these stores down and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try something else. And he's like, well, I think you should really really try to turn it around. I mean, you put all this effort in. And then, uh, uh, yeah, so that was a little sad. And then yeah. uh, he didn't, it, it was all out of his best intentions. He didn't want to see me fail. He always tried to, as everyone does, steer you down the right. safest path. Right. And I'm like all over the place. I'm wanting to go wherever it's risky. That's where I want to go. And, uh, but now he's very proud of me. And, so it's good. It's all good again. So besides the uh, the, the videos, you, what what else are you doing now? Uh, you know, what's the next stage after after you shut the computer stores? How did you get from there to now? Okay, well, um, I did all these trips to Silicon Valley, um, just kind of living off the money that I still had left from the stores. Went broke. Um, didn't really wasn't getting any design work. My first job that I got doing. Uh, electronics design was for like 10 or $12 an hour. It's just like, <laughs> they, they saw me coming. Yeah. And, uh, and do, but do I, you think that they looked at it and said, oh, you know, no formal education, hungry to do this. Yeah, we can, we can pay her virtually nothing. Yeah, and uh, that was part of it. And I don't know, I have mixed feelings about that first kind of, first couple jobs. You had to get the first job, though. The first job's always crappy. Yeah, and it was really hard. I mean... After the computer stores, I had lots of money, and I mean, when I was and the you computer went back stores, to zero. Yeah, it was back to zero Ugh. again, and uh, I was riding the Greyhound bus to from Portland to San Jose to attend all these trade conferences to try to um, to, to find work, and uh, which is awesome. I I just I'm signing the papers now to give a keynote at one of the conferences that I used to sneak into because oh. I didn't have money oh. to, to actually pay the entry fee. So, so awesome. in May, I'll, I, I probably shouldn't say what event it is yet until I officially sign it, but um, that's awesome. I'm so honored. Um, that's so great. Yeah, that's what I did. I, I just I would sneak into these events or do what I could to just network around and I would meet people. And eventually I got my first break and... Uh, so this is how the, the interview for chip designs went, um, being a high school dropout. I would meet someone and they're like, wow, it sounds like you have the perfect skills. And at this, this point, I had already built a bunch of prototype electronics and I'd carry it around with me in a bag and I'd whip it out whenever someone would look. I'd be like, ah, oh, here's a video controller. It can generate video and VGA frequencies. And, and uh, you'd meet someone, they'd be like, come by, we'd, we'd love to talk to you. And then you'd, you'd make it in the door for your interview and you'd be met by human resources. And human resources would be like, yeah, yeah very interesting uh, race cars, mm, computer stores. Mm, um, yeah, you have a lot of IP here, but uh, we don't, where's your education at? <laughs> we have and to tick usually, that box off. Yeah. You left <laughs> that off, huh? where the interview ended. Oh. Because uh, you, you can't waste, I, I, I can't blame them too much because... You can't waste engineers' time. Right. You have to try to pre-screen people. But right. that was frustrating. I did that over and over and over again. But um, really, my big break came from I met someone at a conference. I um, 
went back to Portland afterwards on the Greyhound bus. And they're, they're like, we, we definitely want you to come by. So I came back the next week, like 14 hours on Greyhound bus. Oh, man. Cleaned, cleaned myself up the best I could, walked in the door after an all-night ride on Greyhound. And I go in, and it was the same thing. Boom, rejected by a pre-screened out of it. I'm walking oh. down the stairs out of the building, and the CEO of the company that I had talked to, he's like, oh, hey, how'd it go? Uh, where are you going? I go, well, they told me it was done. They're like, really? What? No, I mean, how could it be done? You've only been here a little while. I was like, yeah, well, they told me it was done. He's like, ah, come with me. And took me and introduced me to the design team. And there it was, uh, designing my my first uh, FPGA design. So so, somebody God. who intervened and, and noticed the Thank talent. Thank God, somebody it was knew. Just, it, was, yeah. it was just pure luck that he was coming down the stairs and I was going, or whatever, vice versa. Yeah, right. Yeah. So how and then from there. How did it come about that you de you designed uh, you designed th uh, the uh, this? <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, so part of my reference designs that I was using to just as like my demo reel was um, I'm like, well, I need a, a system that shows that I can do everything. Right. So like, well, my first computer is a Commodore 64, and I really love it. So why don't I make a Commodore 64 on a chip and use that as a demo? So I really hacked it together very poorly. And just demoed that I could do the basics like CPU, video, sound. On and, one uh, on one field programmable gate array. Gate array. Correct. Wow. Correct. Um, and at that time, the FPGAs, I had to really hack it because they were expensive and they were small and it was incomplete. But um, at this time, I didn't really realize how much. Um, a web presence could help, but I posted some stuff to a Commodore forum and then it kind of spread uh, smart. there. Smart, smart. Well, I, not that it was necessarily smart. I didn't know. And, uh, I got contacted by a company. They're like, we want to make a toy. And do you know how to, how to spin a full custom ASIC? And I just took a big gulp and said, sure. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Never say no. <laughs> Doing that last night for fun. <laughs> So there's a lot of drama around that um, actually getting started. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I was I was talking to chip companies and trying to pretend that I knew how to do the full process. And it was it was rough. But eventually I got everything worked out and uh, put a team together. And we we spent huge amounts of time and uh, got it going. Uh, it took us like five months or so, which is I look back now, there's there's hardly a a chip you can put together in five months, but, but we did it. Well, uh, the key is not we, knowing I, you can't do it. Exactly. Um, or just we being very brave. You're so yeah. brave. I mean, well, or co confident. You, it, you may not have known how to do it, but you knew you could do it. Yeah. Given enough uh, effort, you can do almost anything. Right. But uh, actually there was a very scary point in this story because we were so late. I mean, I, I bid this this project out as, yeah, I think I can get that done in four months or, or something like that. And, well, it, it hit month five. And in the toy industry, you have to be in production by July because it's got to get on the slow boat from China. And that's literally, there's slow boats and fast boats, and then there's airplanes <laughs> from China. And you want to be on the slow boat because it's cheaper. And uh, Which, which so takes I, a month or two, so you got to get it out earlier. Exactly. And then it has to sit in port right? and it's, and it has to go through all that stuff, um, which takes a couple weeks. And they'd pre-sold 250,000 of these oh, things. Geez. <laughs> <laughs> so we did a production run of the chips, 250,000 chips at probably cost them a buck a piece. And then whatever the mask charges were to, to do it a lot of money, like probably a million or a half million bucks to, to do this. And it was here I am. I've only done a few FPGAs before, and I'm doing a... <laughs> an ASIC. A custom ASIC. <laughs> and uh, so I get this phone call um, from China, or from the New York, the toy company, and they're like, those things don't work. What? Oh, no. And they're like, you're on getting on a plane. And I actually considered, like, Running. am I going to have to run to Mexico? Run. <laughs> yeah, run. Get the hell out. <laughs> that was my first, like... I'm so screwed. These things don't work, and they're out like a half a million dollars. And uh, luck, I got on the plane, went over there, and luckily it was just because the Chinese um, toy manufacturer 
had cost reduced my reference board um, and thrown a bunch of stuff off of it. And so I got you, it going. You looked at the board. You said, well, there's missing stuff. Put this on, put yeah. this on. And it worked. Yeah. Like, oh, oh, my God. I mean, this is and amazing. Then, you don't get to test this ASIC. You, you, you have to do it in logically and you design oh. it and you put it out and it's got to work. Exactly. I, I guess I missed part of the story is this is called a, we did a super hot lot. And that means we ran all the wafers through without doing a single test wafer. Oh. Normally you send a, a test wafer through, it takes six weeks and then you test it. And then if there's any changes, you make the changes. So we just pushed all of them through. I mean, most stressful point in my, well, I don't know, maybe high school was more stressful, but pretty, crazy. pretty damn stressful. Pretty crazy. <laughs> and then that really launched my career. And for the last, whatever, eight years or so, uh, I've done lots of toys, lots of really complicated chips. Um, I did a video compression chip uh, a few years ago. I was working with a company in San Jose on a very similar chip last year. That's what brought me down there. Um, one so more story because we're running out of st time, but I, there's a secret to this little thing. When you design the ASIC, you put a back door in. Oh, yeah. And I almost got sued for that, too, <laughs> on top of everything else. <laughs> so um, in cahoots with the software guys, so thanks, thank you guys for, for going along with this. They put extra video games in it. So if you wiggle the joystick back and forth, it drops into a super secret menu, and then you get to play the secret games like Cliff Diver, where you jump off a cliff, and you have to do like these backward spirals and oh, land yeah. on your head perfectly and smash your head open. Uh, <laughs> it's all kind of, there's pictures of us in there, and one of the programmers is drinking a beer with this program <laughs> uh, legend, um, the late um, Jim Butterfield. And Oh, wow. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, it was a beer, so uh, they were... <laughs> <laughs> they were mad about that. Yeah, that's what and they were mad selling about. Selling this to children. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess the toy the toy industry. This is this was actually prior to the the big whoop de doo with um, Grand Theft Auto or whichever one oh, had the new right. in it. The but hot all coffee, that stuff hot was coffee kind mod. of like percolating yeah, at that point. Yeah. And what are they putting um, in there? So they they wrote me and they demanded like you. Are, oh well, when I was in China doing this production run. They saw me drop into this menu, one of the the, the toy executives, and they're like, what is this? I'm like, oh, well, we <laughs> added a few extra things. That's not in the box. <laughs> <laughs> and they flipped. They flipped. Oh, sure. And they said, you are not to tell anyone about this. And um, I got together with one of my hacker buddies that's really web savvy. And I'm like, you know, I, I, I've killed myself to do this project. We have to get this information out. So he helped make a blog that was in uh, broken English that was supposedly had all this prior history to it of a, a Chinese worker that was blogging and oh, discovered this. Oh, wow. How funny. And then uh, we percolated it out to Slashdot and all these other um, news services, and it just took off like crazy. And, uh, of course, the toy company is just yelling at me constantly on the phone, like, how could this get out? We know it's you. And. Um, like, I don't know. Um, but they changed their mind because um, it was being sold through QVC. It which sold was, a lot. Uh, yeah, it sold out in like two weeks. It was, or two or three weeks. Um, Makes a and, difference, doesn't it? Yeah. And, you know, by the way, Jerry got me this on eBay because you, you didn't save any of your own. So no, Jerry brought me this would. from eBay. And it's the greatest gift. And I cherish this endlessly and i have to show for like 80 bucks now apparently they're like four times what they cost originally well you can get I, an was... actual commodore 64 for five dollars in a thrift store but yeah. yours is 80 bucks <laughs> by the way <laughs> jerry is also uh, a roller derby what you don't mess with me look at that what team that are goes... you on uh, i don't i don't play right now i'm retired um currently it's Although gotta be really hard on your back and butt and Oh man, it's but it's fun. It's like oh, I bet. it's the closest thing I've come to um, auto racing. So I was on the high rollers. Um, it was part of the Rose City Rollers, which was a team of four um, teams out of Portland, and it's a whole lot of fun. Uh, so do of course, you now, now do you know why I am madly in love with Jerry Ellsworth? Which this oh. is the this person is the most amazing person I know. Stop it! You're making my. No, I'm crazy about you, and if there were any way. You could ever come down here and, and be part of Twit. I, you have a blank check. 
Oh, okay. Well, I'll think about uh, how much it would take. <laughs> we, we don't deserve we, all these pinball machines. We got to <laughs> how many? Storm. How many? Ninety. And I have an electron microscope. We got to move up there and plasma cutters I and think you're welders. Pretty ensconced. There's yeah. room. <laughs> the new the new place. There actually is room. <laughs> so would I turn it down? I would is give you the uh, no. I'm giving you the whole six thousand square feet basement. Put anything you want in there. It's a lot of concrete and <laughs> sand. It's really hard to burn down. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> it's, it sounds pretty tempting. Jerry, we have to go because unfortunately we oh. have uh, we have to we've got another show coming up. And so much fun. I I could talk to you for hours. I have and and uh, <laughs> and I will continue to. And well, please, the next time, on. please, you got to come, got to come in with us and, uh, and check out my YouTube videos. Uh, Jerry Ellsworth is on YouTube at youtube.com slash Jerry Ellsworth. Her blog is Jerry Ellsworth. Oh man, I got to do something with that. So she hasn't posted since August, but that's okay. <laughs> in fact, the video she posted on here was made in Halloween. So that's okay. <laughs> Last year, Timeless. two years ago. Yeah. But but seriously, uh, the, the oh my god, there's the giant joystick I built. I'm sorry, I'll where you. where we know so us where 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 somewhere there's a giant joystick I built for the California Extreme Conference. Oh, I thought a it was giant in there. joystick that there it is. Yeah, it was like um, five the, feet tall. The Pacinator. Packinator. Packinator. Pac oh, because it's Pac Man. What am I thinking? My uh, good friend Robot Girl. Check her out on Twitter. Uh, um, oh. Another smart lady that's building robots came up with the name, the Packinator. You know, I think there are a lot of women in this, and it's kind of a it's kind of a secret subculture. What's well, exciting? She is like twenty, maybe or nineteen. She's like so young and so excited. It's oh, it makes me warms my heart. It's neat. Well, you're obviously mentoring. You're paying it back. This is the uh, this is the uh, probably was the pinball event that I missed it in, in Marin. Oh man, you got to make it out there. Oh, I really want to go. Bring the just... live streaming rig. We will. You know what? Yeah. Okay, deal. Oh, here it comes. Just here comes the Packinator. Stand back. Here the it Packinator. comes. The world's largest seats. joystick. More no fun than games. We'll be seated during the showing of the Packinator. Satan's cheerleaders. <laughs> That's an awesome movie. Nurses by the way. are on hand. Well, I built Before this the because there... there it is. Look at it. There's. There's uh, this um, producer that made these really tacky movies in the 80s, and he made this this movie about arcades. And uh, Oh, yeah, with giant joysticks, of course. Yeah, of course. So I <laughs> recreated it. But it worked. And he's like, it's he was thrilled. Look at that. It's, <laughs> not only, it, it's cool. Wow. Yeah, and it really played uh, all the Williams games. Nice. JerryEllsworth.com, J-E-R-I-E-L-L-S-W-O-R-T-H.com. And, uh, you know, somehow I get the feeling for Jerry This that the life is just beginning. That's what's really scary. And I don't know where you're going next, but I can't wait to find out. Well, thanks. Jerry, you're the best. Thank you so much for joining us on Triangulation. Thanks, guys. Jerry Ellsworth, everybody. Let's hear it for her. The chat room's going crazy, by the way. The chat room is so inspired by you. I told all my friends to come troll, so... Oh, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. They're saying best guest ever, best show I've ever seen on Twit. Uh, people, I'll say people, that about every show. No, they adore you. So, well done. Jerry Ellsworth. Always a pleasure. Well, I got to get up there and see you. Please, will you? Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Jerry. So, bye. Bye. Great talking to you, Jerry. Ugh, I'm mad for her. Oh, she's fantastic. I don't I mean, know why. I don't know why she thinks her forecast episode wasn't good. It was. It was one of the best we've had. It was a great conversation with two really smart women. Well, and can I tell you? I mean, I I've interviewed Jerry many times, and uh, uh, she always surprises me with something. But we there is so much more to tell in the Jerry Ellsworth story. Um, she is an amazing, amazing. That should person. be our first made-for-twit movie. Oh man! Why? Well, there will be someday. Somebody will make a movie yeah, about her. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's a great story. She, it's amazing. Uh, and and the the other reason I really like having her on, and I'm really glad that she is so uh, straightforward and honest and open about her story, is because I think there are a lot of kids like her who are struggling in high school, who are picked upon because they're smart and different. And I think it's really important to let those kids, and I hope some of them see this. We're going to put it out as a special. Uh, and actually, no, we're putting it out. It's going to be our second episode or third episode of Triangulation. Yeah. That people will see it and... Um, and and these kids will go. Oh, there's there's a chance. There's something. There's light like at the end of the yeah. tunnel, and things I, can turn out well. To, it's not hopeless. I don't have to give up. Um, and I think that that she is such an inspiration to me and to women and just to everybody. That that, that it's all that really matters is brains and uh, 
Persistence. Persistence. Yeah. yeah, I thought it was interesting that she credited it to persistence. Such an inspiration. And uh, she can't marry you, guests. I'm in line. She said she just got a proposed to on the uh, chat room. I think that is <laughs> not the line. first time. Get in line, show, buddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you, everybody. Triangulation is now uh, close to a weekly show. Every Wednesday when we can find a, a guest of that kind of caliber, and as you might imagine, that's not always possible. Uh, Tom Merritt and I will interview them, and uh, that's 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, Wednesdays at live.twit.tv, and there will be a feed. Is it going to be twit.tv slash try, T-R-I? Yes, yeah. that is correct. That's what we decided on, and uh, and you'll find the feed uh, there and uh, video and audio versions of the show. Our first episode will be that great interview we did a couple weeks ago with Warren Spector. I have to say, I really am thrilled to be able to do this with you, Tom, because it's a chance for us to talk to those people that we never get enough time with yeah. and spend a full hour with them. And, and mo most of these people, an hour isn't enough. I'm still wanting to go on. But, oh, yeah, definitely so. not with Jerry. But, you know, we, we'll keep bringing him back and we'll, and, uh, you know, um, <laughs> maybe we'll move the show. But I don't know. We've got to give it more time, obviously. Yeah. It really just it really just exciting it always excites me and i think one of the things that makes this industry so great and so much fun to cover is it's full of interesting unusual smart people and that's who i really care about and those are the people who are changing the world people like jerry ellsworth so we'll see you next time on triangulation thanks tom take care